Welcome to End of Life University on YouTube. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about dealing with the fear of death. And the fear of death is extremely common. In fact, it's normal for us to be afraid of the idea of death. We're hardwired that way. It's part of our survival mechanism to fear death so that we don't go off and do foolish things that could get us in trouble or harm us. Though we all know people who seem to have very little fear of death, death risk takers who uh, engage in all kinds of behaviors that defy death uh, from our perspective. But those people are more rare. Most of us have a natural fear of death and dying. So th there's there's nothing wrong with being afraid of death, but it is important for us to look at it because if we don't examine our fear of death and we don't learn how to manage and deal with it, it can keep us from having healthy conversations about the end of life, from planning ahead for our own death and dying. It can also keep us from being there for our loved ones when they're approaching death and also from talking to other people and supporting other people about uh, their grief. So the more we can work on ourselves to deal with our own fear of death and dying, the more we can have a, a more rich and full life as we approach everything in life in a more open fashion. We're not hiding, we're not repressing our concerns or our fear about death. We're willing to see death as a normal and natural part of life and willing to accept that it comes for everyone at some point. That's how we can do the best planning for ourselves for the future. And also, as I said, show up for other people in our lives when they're going through death and dying. So I have a few slides I just want to show you and some tips on how to deal with your own fear of death and dying. And let me tell you, even people who have worked in hospice for a long time, uh, sometimes need to do their own work on the fear of death because some people get very comfortable helping other people who are dying and talking about their death and dying, but not so comfortable when it comes to facing up to their own death and planning ahead for that. So this is work that all of us need to do, and it's ongoing. It's an ongoing process throughout life that we continue to look at the reality of death and dying, the fact that everyone dies eventually, and there's no way to avoid that. And and also, none of us know how or when death will come for us. So we have to live with a lot of uncertainty around death, but the more we work on it and the more we help ourselves accept it, the better we'll be and the less fear we'll have in life. So I'm going to share some slides with you just uh, to help you uh, visualize what I'm talking about here. And these are just some practical tips for dealing with the fear of death that I'd like to share with you things I've learned over time as I've worked in this arena. So the first is using mindfulness and, and that's to help you with anxiety in general, but anxiety around death in particular if you can spend a little bit of time each day or at least a few times a week just uh, in contemplation, thinking about what arises within you when, when you imagine death or think about death and really looking at the fear and anxiety that comes up that you feel physically and also the thoughts that go through your head around death and dying and spend time just looking at it and just sitting with the emotions that are present and looking at the process that's happening for you. So as you do this mindfulness exercise, you may practice some deep breathing that can be very helpful to help you stay calm. And you can use deep breathing if at any time when you're thinking about death and dying, you start to feel anxious, you feel your heart rate going up, you feel yourself starting to get tense, take a couple of deep breaths, and that will help you calm down again. And another thing you can do is remind yourself right now, I'm okay. I'm thinking about death, but I'm not dying in this moment right now. I'm okay. I'm just thinking about something that's a natural part of life. So if you already have some sort of a mindfulness practice, if you meditate or do yoga, you can incorporate some contemplation of death into those activities. And, you know, it's a, it's a part of yoga 
um, the corpse pose at the end of yoga shavasana, when you're lying flat on the ground, that is an opportunity to just be with your own death and contemplate death. So mindfulness can be very helpful here in helping you manage the emotion of anxiety and fear that comes up within you as you contemplate death. Another technique to use is journaling, which I always advocate, but I highly recommend writing about your thoughts and fears around death. And you could incorporate this, maybe have just one day a week when you stop and do some writing about what is coming up for you as you think about death. And maybe you've had an experience with the death of a loved one in the past that is disturbing to you or that you have some discomfort with. And you could start writing about that a little bit. Like, why does it feel uncomfortable? What memories do you have? And look at it a little bit more closely. I also can recommend to you, I've, I've written a book called The Tao of Death, which is an adaptation of the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. And there are 89 verses about death. It's very philosophical um, and esoteric in a way, but um, they're really good spiritual questions to look at around death and dying. And you can use the Tao of Death in your journaling practice by just reading one verse and then writing about that verse and what comes up for you. You can thumb through it and find a verse that may speak to you on a particular day and let it inspire you to do your own writing about death and dying. And I also have a companion journal that goes with the Tao of Death that has uh, journaling prompts for each verse. So if you're not sure what to write about, you can look through that journal and it just recommends a, a few questions that you could answer more deeply to help you go into that particular verse. And that's a free uh, download that you get if you buy the the Tao of Death. And I can leave a link for that in the show notes if you're interested in that. But journaling is a really helpful way to go within. You can write letters to yourself. You can write letters to your previous self who had a, a frightening experience. You can even write letters to your future self. You can write about um, what your what what your fears are around death, what you would like to have happen around death. You can go in many different directions. But journaling, it's a great way to have a conversation with yourself and really explore what you're feeling inside. And next is just to get more education about death and dying. That's one of the most important steps you can have. Sometimes our fears come from the fact that we don't know very much, or we may be misinformed about death and dying. So educating yourself is always helpful. And I, I highly recommend you, you take whatever steps are available to you to get more education. First of all, just read, just read books. There's so many amazing books out there. I asked ChatGPT to suggest five books on death and dying um, for lay people that are, they're not too academic or someone who's in medicine or something. And this is, this is a chat's list of five books. First of all, Being Mortal, Medicine and What Matters in the End by Dr. Atul Gawande. It's an excellent book. And I, I definitely hi, highly recommend it. That's at the top of my list too. Um, chat recommended The Death of Ivan Ilyich, which is a novella by Leo Tolstoy. So it's, sometimes it's good to look at death in a, not from a um, fiction perspective rather than um, the the nonfiction perspective, the true life perspective can feel harsh and more frightening when we read about death as part of a story that can be helpful to us. Um, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying by Sogyal Rinpoche, another one of my favorite books. It talks a lot about um, Tibetan Buddhism and the approach to death and dying, which is so different than in our society. Uh, in, in Tibetan Buddhism, people contemplate death sometimes as a practice five times a day, and they use all of their adulthood, they're preparing for their own death. So compared to our society, so much more accepting of death and so much more willing to look at it. And, um, and they use really their entire life as a way of dealing with fear, overcoming with fear. So they'll, they'll be prepared for death when it arrives at the end of life. 
Um, this book I have not read, Staring at the Sun, Overcoming the Terror of Death by Irvin D. Yalom, but I've heard it recommended by other people as well. Uh, so uh, I want to take a look at this book myself. And then another excellent book, Final Gifts, Understanding the Special Awareness, Needs, and Communications of the Dying by Maggie Callanan and Patricia Kelly, who are hospice nurses who have written stories about patients they've taken care of and some of the very special communications they've they've seen from dying patients at the end of life. It's really a, a lovely book. I will also recommend, I'm a little, um, you know, shy about it, but my book, Seven Lessons for Living from the Dying, has stories of hospice patients I took care of and the spiritual lessons I learned from them about life as they were dying. And that book, as well as another good introduction to death and dying, if you're interested in that, also, I have an online reading group called A Year of Reading Dangerously, where we read one book a month about death, dying, the afterlife, grief. And I've been doing it for several years now. And I'll leave a link to um, my Amazon storefront where I have the reading list for each year. And you can go through and just look at all the books. There are so many amazing books, but you can look through each of those reading lists for each year that I've been offering the reading group. And you'll find many more books there that might appeal to you if, if you're looking for books to read. So those links will be in the description for this tutorial. So another way to approach your fear of death is simply to talk about it and talk about your fear of death, talk about death and dying in general. And there are many different ways you can find to have conversations about death and dying. If you feel like you have overwhelming fear, paralyzing fear, you may want to seek out a therapist or a counselor talk about the origins of your fear and and ask for some help and support as you're coping with the fear of death. Most of us won't need that. Most of us can get the support we need through other means. And you may find a support group to go to, especially if you're grieving and your fear of death comes from grief after a loved one has died. But you can attend a death cafe. These are taking place in communities all over the world now. If there isn't one near you, there are also virtual death cafes you can attend online. These are very low pressure, uh, just gatherings of strangers who come together just for the purpose of talking about death. You can attend and you don't have to say anything. There's no agenda. There's no teaching that goes on. It's simply having conversations. Some people come because they desperately need to talk and they already know what they want to talk about. Some people come to listen and to hear other people talk and find comfort in recognizing other people are struggling with death and dying as well. Death over dinner is another movement that has gone on when people gather and have a dinner party together and talk about specific questions around death. Those are usually hosted by someone who has uh, received some sort of training in how to do a death over dinner project. So you may not be able to find that in your community um, unless you join with some people and decide to plan it for yourselves. I also recommend the Conversation Project Starter Kit. The, uh, it's a really helpful tool that you can use. You, can, you go through and answer certain questions and write out your answers. And that kit itself, once you've completed the question, questions, becomes a wonderful tool for utilizing with your own loved ones and family members to talk about death and dying. You could also use it to talk with friends as well, but it's rather personal. You talk about your personal preferences for the end of life. Um, but it's an excellent guide for uh, thinking ahead about the end of life and then a tool again for having conversations. There are also some excellent conversation games out there. The Death Deck and Hello are two games uh, that use cards. So, you, and you can use them in many different ways. You can draw cards or choose a card for the evening. They ask specific questions around death and dying that everyone in the group or circle might answer. It's a great way to come together with a group of friends or, or with your family around the dinner table. And you can choose questions, some that are lighter and more fun to answer, some that are more thought provoking. But these games are an excellent way to help you 
talk more about death and just get comfortable with uh, accepting it as a part of your daily life and something that you're willing to talk about with friends and neighbors and coworkers um, to give you the courage so that if you hear that a coworker has had a death in the family, you feel strong enough and informed enough to go up to that person and say, you know, I heard about your loss. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm here for you if you need to talk or if there's anything I could do to help you. Um, another way of coping just with our fear in general is to practice gratitude. And specifically, it means practicing gratitude for the life that you have. Um, as we think about the fact that life is fleeting, we're going to die one day, sometimes we're focusing so much on the end of life that we forget I'm not dying right now. I'm here today and life is amazing. And when we turn our focus back to just living every day, um, like, yes, life is short and it's fleeting and I don't know when it will end, but I know that I'm here right now and I can look outside around me. I can see the sunset. I can look at the flowers in the garden. I can go for a walk. I can say hello to people and I can just be in a state of gratitude for everything that life has brought me so far. The more we live in that place where we accept life as it is and we're grateful for it, even grateful for the fact that we're mortal and that one day we will die, then the more we're filling up each day of our life with positivity, that can help us feel less worried that that we're going to die without ever really having lived our lives. When we're living in gratitude, we're living more fully and life has deeper meaning for us. And we feel less afraid about losing life if we've made the most of the life that we have right now. And gratitude, one of the most important practices we can have in terms of being happier and more content with life as it is, and also more resilient when things happen and change arrives in life and the unexpected occurs. And next, finding meaning and purpose in life. This is, it's really important that each one of us um, spend some time thinking about, writing about, uh, and working on our own sense of meaning. Why am I here? What does it mean? What is my life about? Uh, what is, has my life created? What has my life meant? The fact that I'm here at all? Uh, what has it offered to the world? And if you can spend a little time focusing on this as well, instead of, again, thinking only about the fact that I'm so afraid my life is going to end one day, thinking about how do I, in every moment that I'm alive, with every breath I have, create deeper meaning and a bigger purpose for my life. And, and by purpose, I don't necessarily mean your outer purpose, what you're doing for your job or your career. Um... I'm talking more about having a, an inner purpose for your life. And I will tell you, like, my ultimate inner purpose is to learn about love and to learn everything I can about how to give and receive love. And the more I focus on that, the more I work at finding and giving love, then the more my life feels deep and rich and meaningful and that alone is one of the most helpful ways for me of overcoming worrying so much about the day when my life comes to an end because I just know I'm I'm living the best I possibly can right now and doing as much as I can with the life that I have. So for each of us, it's a it's a personal search. Um, what is the meaning of my life? What is the purpose for my life? And um, we go on that search. Um, by ourselves and go within and really look at what has life taught us so far? Where has life led us? What have our challenges been? Because I find our meaning and purpose often come through the challenges that life has already brought us. These challenges are here to help us go deeper and to help us find that meaning and purpose. So this is something um, I can't give you specific guidelines. Although if you kind of dedicate 
part of every day or every week to thinking about your meaning and purpose. So as you're doing meditation or doing yoga or writing in your journal, spend time about, hmm, why am I here? What is this all about? Um, what has been the the meaning and the reason for me to be here in this world? And what can I do to do it even better and to bring even more love to the world or more light, more beauty to the world around me? Um, another very practical thing that you can do uh, to get more meaning in your life is pursue a hobby. Find something that you love doing. And I, this picture is of knitting because I used to knit a little bit. I haven't done it for years, but I remember how satisfying it was. And I read um, so many people talking about knitting as a wonderful way for them to calm down. And it can actually be really helpful for anxiety because it keeps your hands busy and it engages a, a part of your brain that's kind of on autopilot as you're doing knitting and it gets you into a more relaxed flow state. So there are many other hobbies, painting, music, um, crafts, building things, like many, many things you can pursue, but that can be a helpful way to add more richness and depth of meaning to your life, to pursue a hobby, find something that you just love, that you really enjoy doing, and um, that can make a big difference for you as well. Spend time with your loved ones. That's one of the best ways of finding more meaning and purpose is being with the people you love, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's a pet, those, those that you love in your life, being with them um, enriches your heart. It makes you shine and light up. Spend time with those people um, because that's another antidote to worrying about the fleeting nature of life. Because again, sometimes we're afraid of death because we're afraid of leaving behind our loved ones and also afraid that we haven't had enough time with them. We haven't been with them. We haven't interacted with them. We haven't given enough to them. We haven't shared enough love. So make sure that you're dedicating an adequate amount of time to the people that you love. Don't get so caught up in work and worries and other tasks that you don't spend that precious, important time you have with those you love. This is the way to bring more love to the world is being with the people and the ones that from, the, from your heart of hearts, you truly love and you truly feel loved by. So giving that time and sharing that time can be really powerful in terms of helping you feel like you've lived life fully and you have done the best with the time that you have, which again, takes away the fear that death will come too quickly and will rob you of opportunities for time with your loved ones. And another really good way to work on the fear of death is to become a volunteer. You could be a, become a hospice volunteer, get training and spend time sitting with people who are approaching the end of life. But you can also volunteer in a nursing home or a hospital where you visit with patients and you, you provide uh, an extra set of hands to the, the nursing staff and help do small things um, for the patients that you're working with. So volunteering is a wonderful way to add more meaning to your life, but also to get more comfortable with aging, illness, and the end of life. If you volunteer in these arenas, like I mentioned, hospice, hospitals, nursing homes, because they will uh, acquaint you more with the process at the end of life and help you gradually feel more comfortable, just more comfortable being around illness and aging and death and dying. And that's one of the very best ways of educating yourself about death and dying is kind of throw yourself right into the middle of it, uh, where where it's taking place and where you can uh, ob observe and witness what is happening for other people. After you've been at the bedside of a few people who are dying, I, I guarantee you will have a different outlook on death and dying and much greater comfort in dealing with death and dying. So uh, those are the few slides I wanted to share. And um, this is a kind of a simple approach and simple conversation, but you really do need some, just some 
concrete steps and suggestions for how to move forward and address your own fear of death. Uh, start to deal with it now. Remember, it's a lifelong process. That's why uh, Tibetan Buddhists spend their whole adult life working on it. So do small things now. Listen to the End of Life University podcast. There you'll hear lots and lots of conversations on all different topics around death and dying and grief. That may help you find that you have an interest in one area or another. It might lead you to books that you'd like to read. Um, music you'd like to listen to, people you'd like to follow. And uh, sometimes that's an easy way to um, move into a greater acceptance of death and dying and to overcome your fear. I guarantee you, your life will be better if you do learn how to deal with the fear of death and dying. It will change so many things for you. And um, so I encourage you to stay start doing this work a little bit every day will make a really big difference. So thanks for joining me for this tutorial. Look in the description down below because I'll have a few links for you there if you want to read some more. So until we're together the next time, take care.